Off of the end of the bat, but got some carry out to the wall. This ball's gone. Base is loaded, Byington the hitter, Dressendorfer's pitch. There's a long drive, it's over. The ball will fall out of here. A grand slam home run. series two against Dressendorfer the number one pitcher for Texas this is their number one reliever we'll see what happens left center field it could be it is a home run Gustafson's team earlier today. A home run to win it again tonight. Pitches he threw. He has tagged whoa. this deep to left. Olsen Magic there doesn't live is. on in the reuniting of the rivalry. Michael Barish. One swing of the bat. One wave of the wand. And the Magic comes down. What a way to finish. The Longhorns' first trip to College Station since 2012. The Aggies go from stunned to elated. And the Longhorns, after that epic comeback in the ninth, fall with a swing of the bat from Michael Barish. Only fitting, Coach, that this would end with a dose of Olsen magic. Well, now this is what you don't want. There's some joying, I believe, going on down on the field. They're trying to get everybody out of there. I think they will. Just a little brush up, and I don't think it's too serious. No, the, the Aggie coaches are getting everybody yeah, out of there. The Aggie coaches are getting them in there. Longhorns need to get back. And if they were to win a championship, it would have to happen on the road. The magic number was four with five games to go. All bus rides. Games two and three, the Aggies quieted the critics and endured themselves to the fans that never doubted. They bounced back on Saturday night in a wild 10-inning game to beat the 17th-ranked Longhorns 10-6. Chance Cable dominated the first seven innings of the game, and the Aggies found their bats in the process. Third inning, big swinger, Greg Porter, hit a bomb, seventh of the year. The ball traveled over the 20-foot high center field wall. Only the 25th home run over the wall since Dishbalk Field opened in 1975. It was the first by an Aggie. A&M got four in the sixth. Former UT player Sean Schumacher and first baseman John Sheshik both hit RBI doubles and knock starter Scott Dunn from the ball game. Up six to one, the Aggies' foothold started slipping, and when the eighth inning was over, the game was tied at six apiece. Dalen holds single to start the tenth and went to second on Sheshik's bunt. Well, Lindsey just missed a homer, but it was good enough to get an RBI double to put the go-ahead run across the plate. <laughs> one 
One walk and Eric Sobeck at the plate. He hits one that lights up the capital city sky and disappeared somewhere over the left field wall. Four runs total the AM half of the 10th inning. Russ allowed two walks in the bottom half of the inning, but was able to strike out pinch hitter Jason Espito to win the game. Russ improved to a league leading 11 and one with the win. Game three was AM all the way. The Aggies' Matt Ward was masterful, pitching a complete game and not allowing a run until the eighth inning. Offense showed on the board, but defense was the key. The Aggies killed potential scoring opportunities for the Horns by turning three double plays. Fourth inning, 5-4-3. Seventh inning, Texas runners at first and third. A 5-4-3 double play. Ninth inning, 6-4-3 double play. Game over. Aggies took it to the Horns, 10-1. When the dust settled, A&M had beaten Texas at Dishbaugh Field in consecutive games for the first time since 1978. The second-ranked Aggies improved to 42 and 11 overall, 21 and 5 in conference, and needed to win two of three to repeat as the big. inning and had that lead all of about two and a half minutes. And that one will fall for a base hit and get past Eric Kennedy headed to the wall. Wake is home followed by Shoemake all the way to third is Dukov. Shot right at Hunter Watson at first. The tag down at second base. Ground ball back up the middle, it gets through. One run will score, and two will score. The Aggies take a 2 0 lead. Ball gets away, but we got more action here. Sloppy play, that moves Frizzell up to second. Here's the bubbles. They come back in the fall, and wow, this one's launched to left by Britt. Gone. Mm. Hit it right into the middle of the party. I don't know. I don't think that was horns down. I think we're still too early in the party for a horns down. But that Jackson at first. The hitter is Andrew Calazzo. Canable's pitch is lined to center field. That should score a runner. It's going to score more than that. It goes over the head of Montalbano. It will unload the bases. The question is, will Colazzo come all the way? He's at third. He told him to stop, and he did. But the three-run score, and the Yankees lead it three to nothing. Wow. Colazzo is running right up Kenny Jackson's back. He was thinking inside the park home run. They had to put the stop sign on at third base. You look at Colazzo over there. He wanted to get inside the park home run. Well, championship because they'll be in different sides of the pools. You know, you got to go in there saying, hey, we know we could beat this club. Fly ball left field going back for it is Arthur. He's on the track. It's all over. Put this one in the books. It belongs to Texas A&M. They win one of three and they share the title of the Big 12 regular season. Three runs, nine hits, and one error. No runs, four hits, and no errors. Stripling gets the win. He has won 12 games and lost two. Stafford, the loss, five and three. Yeah, with that win, now he ties uh, Taylor Youngman of the Longhorns with 12 wins in the Big 12. So they're both leaders of the Big 12 with wins. They're here tonight. An impressive game. There was... No scoring at all to the top of the ninth. Let's take a look at the updated standings. And as you see at the top. The first baseman unassisted. It's over four. Chopper right side coming in for it is Arthur. The underhand flip the house and this game belongs to the Yankees. Barely. Texas sends. High fly ball. Short left. 
And just getting to it is Brotson to wrap up the ball game. This one's got Aggies written all over it as they clinch the series. Baylor clinches no less than a tie for the Big 12 regular season championship. And the Aggies also take the baseball portion of the Lone Star Showdown. Jack, final thoughts? On the Aggies dropped a Friday night game against Texas in Austin and then came home to take the next two games from the Longhorns at Olsen Field. On Saturday, Jason Tyner was the offensive catalyst for A&M, as usual, going three for five at the plate and stealing two bases. Casey Fossum was dominating once again, yielding only seven hits and one run in another complete game win. Another road sweep at Kansas set up a showdown with Baylor on the last weekend of the regular season for the conference championship. Jeff Granger dreamed of it. Sports Illustrated wrote about it. And Aggie fans retreated to it. The Southwest Conference game between two of the top teams in the country at Olsen Field. Number three, Texas versus number one, Texas A&M. At stake, the conference title and bragging rights throughout the state. In order for the Longhorns to share the crown, they would have to sweep the top-ranked Aggies. In the tradition of Aggie loyalty, fans camped out overnight to get tickets to the series opener, when A&M would have the chance to clinch the title outright for the first time since 1964. More than 9,000 fans squeezed into the Olsen Field Complex to see two future first-rounders square off. Jeff Granger versus Texas ace Brooks Kieschnick. The Aggie defense set the pace early in the game, retiring the Longhorns in order. Robert Harris ignited the early Aggie charge with a first-inning double. He went to third on a Longhorn error, then scored the game's first run on a sacrifice fly by Trey Moore. The spotlight was focused on the pitcher's mound this night, and Granger was making the most of it, blistering his 92-mile-per-hour fastball past UT batters. Kieschnick provided the Aggies with an opportunity in the fifth inning when his throwing error on Stephen Claybrook's bunt set up an RBI single by Brian Thomas, giving A&M a 2-0 lead. In the seventh inning, the Aggies scored four more runs, highlighted by Harris's three-run home run, chasing Kieschnick from the mound. As the contest moved into the ninth inning, the Aggie fans could sense a Southwest Conference title coming their way. In typical A&M UT fashion, the game ain't over until the fight songs are sung. And sometimes not even then. In the top of the ninth, with A&M on top, six to nothing, the Longhorns pushed across two runs. But Granger wouldn't let down. And with two outs, Texas' Mark Prather grounded out to Robert Harris, ending the UT rally and solidifying A&M's sole possession of the conference crown. However, the team celebration was put on hold as the Ags traveled to Austin the next day to complete the split series. To punctuate their title-clinching victory the evening before in College Station, the Aggies posted a 9-1 shellacking over the Longhorns at Dishfalk Field. Trey Moore was masterful on the hill, collecting his 11th victory of the season. 